And now before I export, the last thing I want to do is if you look in your keyframes over here in your dope sheet, you can see that each of these has an arrow that you can open them up. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see that we have some accidental location and scale keyframes. And that'll happen sometimes. You, you try to animate with just rotation on, but sometimes you mess up a little bit. Um, so there are two ways you can get rid of this. Either you can mute these speaker icons next to location and scale, and then when you export your animation, they will not be there. Or you can hold shift and click and just delete them all. And I'm going to go ahead and do it that, that way for this example. If you open this animation and start editing it and animating again, if you have the speakers muted, they will stay muted. But if you've deleted these keyframes, those will come back. So it might be preferable to meet this, mute the speakers instead of just deleting them. But I'm just going to do it this way for right now because it it's easier for me and I can see at a glance that it's been cleaned up. Delete all of those. And I know it's a little bit of a pain, but it's very much worth oops very much worth it to get rid of all of these excess keyframes because that way it will not interfere if you have, say, a, a shape mod on your horse and your horse uses a shape that's a whole lot different than default, or if later on you are using a full mesh body replacement, um, then your animations will work on those. And likewise, if other horses happen to use a skeleton similar to this one, obviously, at the moment, they, they won't match with the tail and mane animations, but you might get a little bit of similarity in the body animation, so you'd be able to use this animation on other horses. Um, on COG, I am going to go ahead and leave those because I want the COG to move when it goes to frame 30, so I'll leave that alone. Torso is fine, pelvis is fine, chest is fine. and all of the tail and main bones. So I'm just going to check, make sure that all of them are okay and have only rotation keyframes on them. And they do. So now, when you export your animation, you want to put your key, you want to put your keyframe on your timeline back to frame one or zero or wherever it is that is the first frame of your animation. Come back over here. 30 frames per second looks fine. One to 50 is correct. No loop. Now I'm going to call this um, test rear. I am going to export with no bone translations, export test rear. Now, if you were doing a facial animation and you needed to say, move the lip bones like this, then when you check all of these keyframes over here, you would need those lip bones to have both location and rotation, but not scale. So you would delete these three scale keyframes for each of these bones. And then when you export, you would check off with bone translation right here before you export. And that will cause those bones to actually move when you export your animation. But I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and put those back where they were. And that is our IK animation. Now I'm also going to make a quick FK animation to show you a little bit about how FK works. I'll come down here and start a new animation. I'll get rid of all of those keyframes. I'm going to close that window too. So for FK, if you just want to open 
the FK file, you can do that and skip this part. But I'm just going to turn off all of these IK sliders, or all of these IK modifiers on the bone constraint tab. And you can see when I turn these off that my back legs are moving back into the default position because they are no longer fo following the IK rig, which I can now hide because I'm not using it anymore. I'll go ahead and stick my feet back to normal. Now for FK, I, I like to use FK animation for things like walking animations, things where your feet aren't really going to stay in one position where they're constantly moving. So for a quick demonstration, I'm just going to do a little bit of a trot animation because I find trots pretty easy to make. Um, it's not going to be a beautiful trot because I'm trying to do this pretty quickly. So I've marked my 1, 25, and 50. I'm going to come to a out the middle here and move the body up a little. All right, I'll turn off the IK there too. So move the body up a little, um, and I'm going to copy this keyframe and put it about in the middle here. So now I've got a little bit of a bounce animation going, and now I'm just going to fill the legs in. So I'll do something like this, and again, for this, you need to rotate starting at the top and going down. So you're going to grab each leg and work your way down the chain and mark it with rotation animations. Yeah, I think that's what should be down. And I'm going to add in a, a collected neck. It's maybe a little too collected. Maybe like that. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put that on the last frame. And I'm going to put it here on this middle frame. And what I'm going to do now is highlight the legs using B to drag and select. And I'm going to hit Control C, Control C, Control Shift V, and that will change. That that will mirror the legs from left to right. So Control C, Control Shift V. Now they're opposite. Control C, Control Shift V. They're opposite again. I missed elbow, so I'm going to fill in elbow right there. So now my legs kind of move a little. This kind of looks more like a jog in place than a trot right now, so let me fill in maybe another keyframe in the middle here where this leg takes a step. And this one too. And I'll go ahead and put these back. There we go. So again, I'm going to hit A to copy all. Hit this top keyframe. Control C. Control V. And now I've got... Oh, and then I need to mirror these, don't I? Oh, wait. So in order to mirror them, I need to make sure that there are keyframes on all of the leg bones. So fill that in. Hit I. Control C. Control V. And now I've got whoop, a little something funny happening. Oh, I still haven't mirrored them. <laughs> All right. I'm going to scoot these over. There we 
There we go. So that's a little bit of a trot animation. Um, now for this, again, I need to animate my mane and tail. I'm not going to do anything too fancy with the mane and tail because that will take a while. But I do at least need to make sure that they have keyframes. I'll go ahead and have the mane come up a little bit when the horse is up. I'm going to copy all of these. Control C, Control Shift V. And copy these keyframes to over here. And for the tail, let's have it just kind of up a little bit. But I'm not going to do any fancy animation with the tail. Alright, so there's our animation. Again, I'm going to make sure that I don't have extra keyframes, and I sure do, so I'm going to delete all of these. Okay, so now that's done. I want to make sure again that my timeline is back on frame one of the animation. Make sure that the start and end frames are correct, and they are. Um, because this is a trot, my trot should be priority three to fit in with the AO animations. I do want a loop on this, and I want it to begin at the first frame, which is 1, and end at the last frame, which is 50. So I'm going to loop from 1 to 50, and I'm going to call this test trot. Once again, I am not exporting with bone tra translations, so I can go ahead and export. And there it is. So now I have made two translations. Oh, I have a tapple visiting. I'm going to upload both of those. Upload bulk. Test rear and test trot. And now I can play these in world and I can see my horse moving. Much like we would expect it to. All right, so now I have made and uploaded animations for the Teagle Horse. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in an applier. Um, I do not right now have the AO applier to show you for the trot. I'm hoping that that will come soon and then I'll be able to do another video about that. But I do have the applier for the animation tab on the hood over here. So I'm going to drop an animation and sound pack applier down here, edit it, get rid of what's already inside of it, and I'm going to put test rear in there. So now when I wear this or when your customers wear this they will see test rear appear in here by default. Now I also want to give a sound to this rear so I've got this sound. I'm going to put it in here and in order for the sound and the animation to play at the same time all you need to do is rename the sound the same as the animation name, so test rear, and then add a space and write sound. So I have test rear and test rear sound. So I'm going to take this into inventory and add it. I'll get this pop up. Yes, I want to allow it. And now you can see that test rear has a appeared right here in my add on animations. It's very easy. So I can play that and I'm going to rear. And that's it. So that's about the long and short of making animations for the Teagle Horse. I hope you enjoy and good luck.